Hi everybody, Luke here for another episode of the Manufacturer Series here at Blue Moon Raceway. I'm going to tell you right now, this is one race I just did not care at all. Um, I was looking forward to it because it was an oval race. We don't really get a lot of oval races during the, the FIA uh, races. Because the oval races seem to be more of an American thing. Especially in iRacing. Um, oval racing is very prevalent there, but just for... G, um, GT Sport, it's all about road courses, and oval races is kind of a weird thing. I do remember in the beginning series, I think it was like season one, uh, there was a Blue Moon Raceway uh, race. I think it was only group four cars, or probably lower than that. Maybe it was the N500s or 600s. I do remember there was a race um, here, and it, it was, I would say, fun and enjoyable because you had to pit like twice. But I think th this race just goes to show that maybe the Group 3 cars really don't belong here unless it's the inner, inner course. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, this is going to be a short episode because this was a race I just did. I was excited for, but the results showed that how much I hated it. I didn't even try a second time. I just bit the bullet and whatever I got on this race was that was it. Um, so anyway, we're running our way with qualifying here. We're just trying to uh, stay behind the slipstream up for, of the Corvette up ahead, but they're kind of they already have the slipstream of the car up ahead, so I'm kind of losing out on that one. But thankfully, I'm not giving the slipstream to anyone behind me, so that's pretty good. Uh, lap times around here, I think it was around 41, mid 40s. That's what the pace was in the lobby, especially for me. And it wasn't something I cared about too much because I felt like qualifying pace was didn't really show your true potential for oval racing because it's all about staying in the slipstream just overall um, making sure you're staying in the pocket and uh, we're just going to speed up right here because I already posted an initial lap of a uh, 43.4 but luckily for our second qualifying lap uh, we ha we're actually behind the pole sitter uh, so that's actually pretty good for some slipstream usage and just seeing it, how they're taking their lines as well because uh, there's three corners, but it's mainly two corners that you really have to worry about even touching the braking. So right on, right past the 100 meter board, you're under braking. Corvette goes wide. I notice it's not beneficial to actually go all the way towards the apex where the apron is. You want to go slightly towards the middle lane, and then you just want to shoot out all the way to the exit. So you're still going to take like an, a somewhat apex, like you're gonna hit a, an apex, but it's not where you think it's going to be towards the apron. It's going to be right towards the middle lane. Uh, just so that's the best way to carry momentum without scrubbing speed. Um, so we actually, uh, right before the second corner, we actually overtook the pole sitter. And with that lap time, we actually get a 43-2. Uh, so I was completely lying when I was saying uh, we were doing 40s and 41s. I do not know where I said that at all. I don't even think I even saw that even during the race, actually. Uh, so, luckily we're actually P2, but like I said, um, qualifying isn't really the main factor for this race, because I, I guarantee you, there was probably someone in 20th place that actually shot all the way up, and God bless them, whoever they were. Um, I didn't really go look at the results, I just remember I was not, this is just not a fun race at all, I can tell you right now. Um, no one was enjoying themselves. Well, I think some people were whoever benefited from all the slipstreams and the bumping. Because um, you also have to remember at this this time, uh, GT Sport actually removed the majority of the penalty system. Right now, it's scrapped. Only It's only used for corner cuttings and track extensions, but not for uh, punting people or door-to-door -door con uh, contact, which was a major problem for the penalty system beginning this se uh, season where it was just slight door contact and you would just have uh, five, four to five second penalties for something that we weren't infringing on anyone's race but it was you know Robin's racing kind of thing and maybe that just might be a thing for American drivers that we we kind of think rubbing is racing um, I do see that in some of the European drivers uh, when you get close it, you get a little uh, you do the same thing but I think for over here in America, it's kind of more prevalent. Uh, we do respect, you know, space and all that. Uh, I just think over here, you, you can get a little closer than normal. 
but anyway, I think that's what, what's going on with the penalty system right now. It's just that they got to rethink how to do door built contact. Um, but anyway, we're underway for the race. Uh, you can see there the Corvettes in, that was getting slipping from uh, P1, and then here I am in P2. Let's hope that I can keep the position, uh, especially since I, my door number is 8, so it's pretty good starting right now. And we're underway here. Uh, so the main concern here is that it's going to be a one-stop race. At the time, I really didn't know what the strategy was. I was just looking at the fuel and what the uh, tires were going to be. Um, since we're only using the hard tires for this race, I thought to myself, maybe it's a one-stop strategy. Maybe it's a no-stop strategy for the tires, but you have to refuel. I think the fuel was around 5 to 6% at uh, times for fuel usage. So I was kind of curious how that was going to play out for us. So anyway, uh, Pulsar actually makes a mistake into the first corner. It goes a little wide. So now we're just going to stick him behind the slim stream. Uh, we're much closer than really thought we were going to be. I'll immediately off the gas. And at this time, my main concern was, all right, let's just see if I can stay with him as long as possible because of the slipstream and just try to get away from the Canadian right behind us in P3. Because if we can, if we were able to make a little gap uh, to third place, we would just be able to shoot off by ourselves. Um, there would be people who would be leapfrogging people for the slipstream and can gain momentum on us, but the main concern was just uh, getting away from the group behind, especially since you can see they were almost going three wide into the second corner, sorry, the first corner. But the main focus is to stay in that slipstream and just seeing if we can get some time away from them. And it seems like I'm getting good momentum in this back straight here. Uh, blue, the Blue Moon Raceway, is it's pretty... Blue Moon Bay, my apologies. It's pretty fun because um, it actually is similar to the Pocono Raceway near, near me. Uh, Pocono Raceway is about like an hour and a half from me uh, since I live in South Jersey. So it's... It's pretty cool that I have a racetrack that close, but I also have New Jersey Motorsport Park as well. But Pocono is, I think it's one of the few uh, three-point oval race uh, oval tracks. So that's pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, it's synonymous with uh, horrific crashes for IndyCar. So hopefully we won't have the same um, outcomes here today. And as you can see right behind us, we already have the Mercedes already gaining on us. So it's clear to show that Maybe I need to get a move on and start leap. Me and the Corvette start leapfrogging ourselves for this uh, for this first position, and hopefully that guy um, they can figure it out as well. Because I know uh, Ironheart, uh, they have been in other races with us, and you know I'm pretty sure they have good pace overall. Um, I haven't always been constant with the looking at the standings. I'm only familiar with uh, the Toyota drivers. Um, currently, as of week seven of the manufacturer series. I'm 10th overall in to for Toyota in North America. And so I'm aware of like who's who's around me. Um, like I know C6 Tom G, he's, a, he's I think top five. So I'm, I'm aware of those drivers, but not everyone in, in the North America. I'm not familiar with all their uh, work, I would say. I, I just, the names are more familiar, um, not their results. So anyway, uh, we actually, got past the Corvette uh, right before the second corner. Um, I re was really hesitant on making that move only because if they stuck behind us um, it would probably be fine but it seems like they're already down to P4 and now the, I think that's the Hyundai right behind us that's trying just bump drafting us, making it, making sure we're moving forward and it's all about kind of holding on to this position or if someone's going to pass me, they're not doing it in the corner where you're compromising both of our exit speeds, which is, that's the main concern about this race is if you're going to be uh, leapfrogging one another, you can't do it on the corners, you got to do it on the straights. And uh, it, you're going to see it consistently that no one's doing that. They're just saying, it's like, all right, I'm just going to take him to the corner and we're going to lose all that speed. So already down the straight, people overtook us. That's fine. Totally fine. I don't have to compromise my exits. Uh, entries and exits and so far we're just going to fast forward here up until when the main chaos starts to unfold because now we're down to P5 at P6 and it's just that we're getting a little cluster now uh, we're down to 8th position now but you can see first place is only half a second front it's really anyone's game right now um, it's really not 
I'm not really worried about it too much since we're going too wide and everything. Uh, we're all pretty much close together. Um, but on the exit of going on the straight, we actually get a push from the Porsche and it hits the wall and we actually lose valuable momentum onto this main straight. Uh, we're going to have the, I believe it's the Corvette coming on on the right side. And then we're going to have maybe the Lexus, sorry, the Nissan look for an opportunity on the outside as well. But under braking, I'm still fine. I'm going all the way down to the apron. Nissan gives us a little shove. Thank you for that. So it gives us better momentum. But now it's crucial that we stay in the slipstream and not lose any more time. Because now it was a half second when we were on the back straight. Now it's down. And now it's up to 1.4 seconds. So we, lose, we lost a lot of time right there. And it now it's about a game of how can we leapfrog these cars and not lose time at all. That's because you got you got to do on the straights. In the corners, you're just going to be losing valuable time. And unfortunately, you'll just be losing the race by then. I decided to look for an opportunity to go three wide in this corner because I'm pretty sure I had the momentum, but getting out of the slipstream, you lose all that uh, forward momentum, unfortunately. And it's just you're working on with the engine at that point. Uh, car right behind on our right side, the Mercedes, actually pushes us out so they can sneak behind the slipstream. So unfortunately, I have to be down to P12 and uh, stay behind that Mercedes. And throughout the race, it was a constant pushing each other off. It just wasn't, people weren't giving me enough space. And even though I said earlier that Americans tend to be more rubbins racing, like we're more door to door contact because of the whole, all the over racing, it's kind of in our blood kind of weird thing. I wouldn't say me personally because I, um, road racing is more of my thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of over racing at all. It's fun and exhilarating, especially the Indy 500, but um, I would say when it comes to road racing, pe um, drivers are more conscious about uh, spacing, especially through corners, as opposed to uh, over racing. So now we're, uh, we're just kind of like settling in, trying to figure out what we should do. Um, like how can we make an opportunity because no one's giving themselves some space. And I get the red text of low fuel. Uh, at point 0.5, there's no way I can make enough, so I actually jump into the pits immediately. Uh, I got a brand new set of tires, and I'm starting to think that wasn't the best idea. Only because if it's the hard tires, it's only 12 laps in, and you you probably have like 90% left of tires left. And I'm starting to think I lost crucial time there. I f filled up the tank just a little bit over than what I need to, just in case if I have to pull out of slipstream and use more of the uh, rev of the car. Um, so out of the pits we go, and crucially we almost knock the, the Lexus into the wall, um, but they get good momentum, sorry, the BMW, good momentum out of the first corner, and we're just going to speed up to see what's going to happen when the next round of cars go into the pits. I try to get as low as possible for that first corner, and that Lexus was not going to have it, and that Castro Lexus, we're going we're gonna to be with them probably for the end of the race. Um, yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe getting a new set of tires wasn't the best idea. That's pro we probably lost crucial time for it. Um, but now it's just putting your head, uh, putting the head down, saving some fuel because it seems like we were losing a lot of fuel overall. Um, I wasn't really expecting to be doing 12 laps and then pitting it. So we, yeah, it's going to be a little tricky at, towards the end of the race. Um, see if we have enough fuel for that. Uh, for another stint, so it, I'm being conscious of just uh, short shifting just a little bit, but not too much. Uh, the Toyota is pretty good in fuel saving overall, so I was, I was kind of concerned that other cars were doing better than I am. Uh, we, that Corvette just destroyed that first corner and compromised everyone's line, but fortunately everyone has better exits than me for some reason. Uh, that first corner is just deadly, it can make or break your next lap or two laps because of how much momentum you need to carry into the first corner. Um, but we're just going to be fast forwarding and just seeing that we have a pack going in front of us now, uh, behind us. Uh, I think it's from P12 down to P15 that's going on. And the Lexus is going to be bump drafting us here, but they decide, never mind, I'm just going to be going to the inside line and ruining both our momentums here. Because now you see I'm picking up all those pebbles, and those pebbles actually do matter for the tires, I've noticed. Um, probably not in the oval racing as much, but I, I have noticed that in 
uh, the road courses such as Laguna Seca and uh, the Red Bull ring. Like if you if you're on those pebbles, uh, you kind of lose some uh, grip. So I know we got a huge pack right now. We're dealing with from P12 down to P yeah P16. Um, it, this is going to be the group we're going to be fighting for the rest of the race, unfortunately. Uh, as you can see, from P12 up to P11 is a huge gap, and if we're going to be catching them, it's going to be a lot of cooperation. And I don't think these people really want to cooperate at all. Um, as you can see, going two by two um, into the first corner, and it's just... We're already losing time, and it's really unfortunate, because now uh, the leader is seven seconds ahead, and there's no way we're going to be catching that at all. Uh, the time's just going to be steady. Um, from seven seconds and it's all about just trying to see if we can gain any more positions from here it's unfortunate right now that we're p2 we started p2 and we're trying to fight for 12th position here in the final lap like i said this was not a race um, i was looking forward to it seeing how it would come maybe it would be tighter um it truly is up front but for me it just seems like nothing but mistakes or that it just never come, never come to grips of over racing, and I just wasn't enjoying this, and it was probably the main reason why I lost a lot of points in the championship because I just didn't want to do a second round. So we're coming up to the final corner. It looks like we're gonna have to settle for P16. Maybe we'll get a good momentum on Lexus, um, but unfortunately, I actually don't have enough fuel to cross the finish line. I'm just be coasting from here, P16, P17, and that's really it's really unfortunate. I could have finished. P15, but um, yeah, I'm not even on the front screen. Um, I'm just glad that that race is over and I'm, it's done with. I don't have to look at it again. And so I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.